Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be fitting out a solo PvP Varger. The reason for that is because I'm going to be buying one really soon to take out solo. Um, I just got Marauders level 5, so I can fly the hell out of this ship as far as skill points go. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some huge fights and some really fun stuff and great footage to put up on the website. So, if I do, I'll post it. However, there's a chance that someone's going to out-escalate me and, you know, drop a dread on me or 100-man fleet. Who knows? Either way, it's going to be fun. I'm using EFT for this. If you don't know what EFT is, it's Eve Fitting Tool. The link to download it is on my website, eveproguides.com. Go to the right side of the website. On the sidebar, it'll say Must Have Tools, I think. And there's a link there. You can download it. So, first things first, when you're fitting a ship, you want to know about the ship. What does the ship do? Right, one part of that's the bonuses right here, but we'll get to that in a minute. But another thing is knowing for Marauders, they're all about the Bastion. So let's learn about Bastion. Bastion is considered a siege module, just like a Dread Sieges or a Carrier Triages. So it's a siege module. What it does is when it's active, it lasts for 60 seconds. Therefore, you cannot turn it off for 60 seconds. You're stuck there. 60 seconds for Dreads and Carriers, five minutes. But for Bastion, for one minute, you're stuck, okay? And for that one minute, you get some bonuses. You get 100% bonus to armor repair, 100% bonus to shield repair, 30% bonus to shield resist, 30% bonus to armor resist, 30% bonus to structure resist, which is kind of interesting, and negative uh, 100% to speed. So basically, you stop down to zero meters a second. Your missiles get a 25% velocity increase, which is just range. Helps them to hit things as well, but range for the most part. Optimal and fall off for turrets, which is range. So <coughs> you can basically read that as when you're in Bastion, you tank really well, and you get an increase in your weapon range. So that's it's very nice. It's a great thing to have. We definitely want one of those, so put it on there. Next, you want to look at the bonuses and try to figure out what's optimal for those bonuses. So, in this case, we have Mimitar Battleship Skill per level, 5% to Rate of Fire, which is damage, five, and 10% to Fall Off, which is range. That's good. Typically, when you see a Fall Off bonus instead of an Optimal Range bonus, then it's favoring the shorter range weapon, in this case auto cannons over artillery. For uh, hybrid turrets, a fall off bonus would typically favor blasters over rails. But in this case, auto cannons is what it's kind of leaning us or pushing us towards. Because an optimal range bonus works better for artillery. Whereas for us, for this type of ship, auto cannons are going to work much better for us. So next for Marauder skill, 7.5% per level to shield booster amount and 7.5% per level to turret tracking speed. That's awesome. So the increased tracking is going to help us a lot with the fact that we're using battleship size guns and we're most likely going to be taking on all sizes of ships. Frigates we're not going to be able to track most likely unless they're approaching, running, or sitting still. But for everything else, we're going to have a really good chance of tracking them, especially if they're webbed. Let's get that back up. Then the roll bonuses, 100% to projectile turret damage. Reason for that is because you only have four turret slots, hard points. So basically, it turns those four into the same damage as eight. So... Having four instead of eight, you would say, well, that's, that's a bad deal, but it's not. It's actually a better deal. The reason for that is because four, with the same damage as eight, overloads a heck of a lot better than eight. So you can overload four turrets for probably three times longer than you can overload eight turrets. So it's actually a, a pretty sweet bonus that helps you out a lot because you can overload, we'll see in just a second, I think, for six minutes. So for the whole fight, just about. The tractor beam bonus is completely unimportant. 
The 70% to micro jump drive reactivation delay is really nice because that means you can jump around the field so long as you're not scrammed or capped dead. That's nice. And so those are basically our bonuses. So based on that, we want to start building our ship. So first off, since we're right here next to the projectile turrets, let's go ahead and get our auto cannons, large 800s. And while we're looking at them, let's go over two things. First of all, the overload. You can see here, 5 minutes, 30 seconds, which is really, really good. But, in reality, you would do something like this. If I was fitting this ship in E, this is how I would do it. <coughs> I would leave gaps in between the modules so that you can overload for longer. You can see here, 6 minutes and 36 seconds is now our overload time. Which is really nice. Being able to overload for six and a half minutes means that you can overload for the majority of the fight without having to worry too much about your weapons. That's probably going to go down when I fill these slots. But for now, that's pretty nice. Just for the fitting, to make fitting easier, I like to keep them all together so that I can do this. Shift-click. Change ammo. All right. And while we're at that, let's just show you the drones. I've got five infiltrators, five warriors. Infiltrators are pretty solid. Warriors are good for frigates that maybe staying at range, like maybe a carries or something. Then we want a MJD. That's pretty crucial for our fit. Turn it off. And you can almost never go wrong with the damage control. That doesn't mean that every ship should fit a damage control. Don't get me wrong because that's certainly not the case. There's a lot of ships that will do better not fitting a damage control. But in general, anything that's tanky and anything that has plenty of low slots that you're not really lacking low slots, you pretty much want to go with the damage control because it gives you more effective hit points right here. That'll go up. And also more resists across the board. All right, so the damage control, that's all good. Let's come up now to our mid slots here. And we want to work on a tank. So you can see I've I've put solo PvP, no ASB. The reason for that is because extra large ASBs are going to be very hard to fit on this ship. You can see they've already surpassed my CPU. And they've only left me with two mid slots to further increase my tank and to further uh, and to allow me to tackle things. I want a long point and a web on this ship, so that's not going to work. So something cool that I've noticed is that a really awesome dead space module called a Pith X-Type Extra Large Shield Booster is only 60 million ISK in Jita and several of the trade hubs. But 60 million ISK for a large Pith X-Type or Extra Large Pith X type. That's pretty awesome. You want to move that to an outside slot on the rack to get maximum overload. So we've already got 1600 tank. That's pretty dang, that's, that's pretty damn good. But we're going to need capacitor. So 1 minute 46 just isn't going to cut it. Not to mention we're going to have nuke pressure most likely. So you want heavies. Tech 2. Navy 800s. All right, so that's going to solve most of our capacitor problems, but not all. And now we want to get some tackle. So I want a web and a point. I think that's going to be necessary to track enough to really handle the smaller stuff. So let's go ahead and let's just start with a Tech 2 disruptor. And for our web, I think let's go a little bit more expensive and get a Fed Navy. It's going to give us more range. So we can overload that sucker and web out to 18k. I think that's going to be helpful. And now we need to figure out what to put in this mid slot to increase our tank. First thing we want to do before we do that, though, is we want to go ahead and get our rigs. Because we're doing a shield boosting tank, we've got a couple options for our rigs. All right, so we've got, let me pull it up. You can do resist rigs like this. Or you could do one for extra shield hit points, an extender. Or you could do this one. It's going to make it, what is it, 
duration minus 20 percent that's going to cause it to use more capacitor to get more tank it's not optimal the really the best thing to do here is resist rigs so we want to look at what our lowest resists are and that's em and thermal you see here em thermal might as well go all out tech 2 resists you can see our tanks now moved to 2000 it's going to go much higher and now we've got to figure out what to put in that last mid slot so there's two options first is a shield boost amplifier which takes it to 2600 so that's pretty good it doesn't require any more capacitor which is a good thing but we might be able to do better with an invul so let's drop that out 2665 remember that and 2843 for an invul but the invul here does 2843 that's pretty that's pretty nice um, our capacitor though is struggling I don't like that at all so we may have to address that later on all right so that's our basic tank right there next we want to let's see we want to get some damage out of those guns so 657 is just not going to cut it. So let's get some gyros. Gyros being the ones that affect auto cannons. Uh, check the tracking. It's not as good as I would like. Let's throw in a tracking enhancer. I'm going to leave that slot open for right now. I may fill it but I think I'm gonna have to use something in that slot for fitting reasons so I'm gonna leave it there just in case ideally I would probably do this let's just go ahead and do it something like that so good DPS thousand on overloaded overloaded we're doing 1127 so good DPS output lots of fall off uh, in general the equation is optimal plus fall off equals 50 percent damage so at 61.1 kilometers we're going to be doing 500 well not actually that's not true we're going to be doing half of our turret dps which would be 430.9 430.9 dps at that range of optimal plus fall off so that's a good way to think of it anything less than that the damage is going to go up at 4.1 if the target's not moving and tracking or you know track is not an issue then you're going to be doing full DPS. But it's going to be probably something lower than that because most targets are going to be beyond your optimal, which your tracking helps because it extends that. So does Bastion. It helps by extending those ranges. The further out you extend those ranges, the greater you have effectively increase your DPS. So that's good. Everything's looking good there. I like it. DPS output is great. Shield is good, but going to get a whole lot better in a minute. Now, capacitor is our biggest problem. Well, one way to work with capacitor is you can either throw in another cap booster or you could switch this out for an ASB, but that's just not going to work because it's not going to last long enough. So, how about an energy vampire? I don't know if we can do heavies. Yeah, see, CPU is going to be a problem with that. So, let's try a medium. Let's get two mediums, and that's going to help quite a bit if anything's within 12K of us. You assume something's going to be within 12K because they're going to try to scram you to turn off your MJD. Now, it's an important thing to remember about your MJD is it has two vulnerabilities, a warp scrambler, not a disruptor, scrambler, and capacitor. If you don't have the necessary capacitor, 786 switches pretty decent that's about 10 percent of your capacitor if you don't have the capacitor needed to start it or if you get scrammed you are unable to run your MJD which makes you jump 100 K in whatever direction you're pointing ideally you want to align to a warpable then MJD not just MJD out to nowhere because then you're gonna have to realign to warp if you align first before your MJD then you can almost insta warp after you land which is gonna save you many many times so we want to make sure we have enough capacitor. The nozzles and the cap booster are going to help with that. The cap booster is going to give us, let's see, well, it's at 800. It's going to give us 800. 
capacitor every time we run it. So one charge, if you hit quickly hit the cap booster and then the MJD, it's going to send you into your micro jump cycle most of the time uh, if you're fast enough. So capacitor's probably going to be okay. We're just going to have to be careful in fights where we can't run our nozzles and we're having to run our tank full time. When the enemy is standing off, that's going to be a problem. Most of the time, you're not going to have to run your tank nonstop. And you can potentially... Um, no, you can't. Well, you, you could overload the invul and get more tank without more capacitor. All right, so we've got those. Now, our other threat is to be scrammed. So what things can we do to help us not be scrammed? Well, one thing is, oh, I don't want that, smart bombs. So smart bombs are going to give you several different uh, benefits. For one, a smart bomb is going to damage any ships that are within its range, really close to you, in scram range, basically. But for two, it's also going to blow up all the drones that are attacking you. So let's take a, a scenario here. Let's say you are roaming through low sec and you come across a fleet of 20 cruisers and battle cruisers mixed and some frigates probably. Okay, they all know uh, that you've got smart bombs running or actually let's not say that. They all attack. Each one of them is probably going to have five drones, lights or mediums or whatever. So Five times, let's say, 15 of them actually can put out drones. Five times 15, you've got 75 drones that are on top of you. Now, drones are usually somewhere around 10 to 20% of the DPS output of a ship. Sometimes more on drone ships. So, if it's like a Vexor Navy issue or something like that, Ishtar, which would be using Sentry, so it wouldn't matter. But most drone ships, or most ships, are going to be putting out a decent portion of their DPS with drones. By blowing up their drones, you are increasing your effective tank. So even though you're only tanking 2,843 right here, in reality, you're putting out, you're tanking quite a bit more than that because you're going to be able to blow, out, blow up all their drones. And what drones you don't blow up, they'll have to recall and not use. So, by using a smart bomb, not only are you discouraging frigates from scramming you, but you're also removing a lot of DPS from the field. Now, ideally, I would use a large. I'd use a large, and I don't know, maybe a wa large YZ. So that's a thermal damage, that's fine. However, we don't have the CPU. Now, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to drop our one of our gyro stabs for a CPU? I don't think so. Because we lose quite a bit of DPS. But maybe it is. So let's let's kind of look at this. This is going to be a 300 damage every 8.5 seconds. So that's nice. It's going to have a range of 5,000. Okay. So let's take and look at what a medium would do. A medium still doesn't fit. So we may have to address the CPU anyway. But 4,000 instead of 5,000. That's not a big decrease. And one twenty damage every eight point five. So you're gonna take a, a pretty significant decrease to damage. I'm gonna pause it just a second because what I want to go look at now is how much do these factions cost? Let's do Yeah, a faction medium plasma. So I'm gonna go pull that up in Eve Central and I'll come right back. All right, so a Shadow Serpentus medium is only 10 million isk. That's going to give us a little bit more damage, but more importantly, it gives us more range than the 
large does. So let's go with that. That's only yeah, it's only going to be about 10 million isk for that module right there. And the range is going to be really nice to make sure we get anything that's in our scram range for the most part. Um, if they get wise to it, they're just going to orbit out at like 7, 8 kilometers. But the further you can force them away from you, the better you can track them anyway. So it works in our favor. You notice that hurts our capacitor even more, but... You're only going to be running that for the beginning of the fight, most likely, and you're only just turn it on whenever the drones show back up. So that's really not going to be part of the fight. Next, we're going to have to address our CPU problem. The first thing I want to do is I want to look and see if there's anything I can do to reduce CPU usage. I don't think there is. Let's try this. Let's try Republic Fleets. Those are a little expensive, but not horrible. Okay, that's also going to increase our DPS. Okay, so three Republic Fleets is going to help. What about if we try to save some money, and instead of doing that, we change our damage control? So, let's do this. Let's... Uh, Let's see what that does. So right now we've got 2843. Go to the next level down. Damage control. Still doesn't solve our problem. Not much of a decrease. You know, instead of taking something away from our ship, let's add something. So let's just go with faction. Okay. So there, we pretty much have our full fit, but we're not done yet. So this is the ship right here, and I think that ship will work very well. I think that ship <coughs> is going to be very difficult to kill, and it's going to do a lot of damage. However, it needs, it's not done yet. We can do more to make it better. The first thing is boosters and implants. So we can get that shield tank much higher with boosters and implants. First of all, boosters. How about a... Strongs are kind of hard to find, so let's do an improved blue pill. And now we're at 35. We're going to go ahead and remove all these penalties because if you have the skill tra trained up, it's a low chance you're going to get a penalty. Not sure if it'll show us the... Yeah. Okay, it does. These are the skills that affect it. So one affects the chance of getting the penalty, and the other affects, I'm not sure which is which, and the other affects the duration, or not the duration, the amount of the penalty, I think. So how much penalty you actually receive. But, like I said, you don't, in most of the cases, you're not going to get a penalty if you have the skill trained up. If you do, you can just hope it's going to be something that doesn't affect you that much, like maybe the explosion velocity, which affects missiles. So that wouldn't affect you as much. The optimal wouldn't affect you as much because optimal is already pretty crap. It's not really going to make any difference. So you can see 3.357. Yeah, nothing. So then even if you do get a penalty, you've got a 50% chance. It's going to be one of these <coughs> that doesn't have any effect on anything and doesn't hurt you. The other two would hurt you, but, you know, that's, that's the, the roll of the dice. So, there's our booster. Moving on. Implants. Active tanking. You know, ideally you would do this with high-grade crystals. And I'll show you that really briefly. But, high-grade crystals are really expensive. Uh, more expensive than the ship and it's up to you if you want to use them you can see how much tank they're giving us here five three nine nine but in general for much less you can go with the mid grades and let's just see what those do so it's right now it's five three nine nine
and now we're at 4711. So that's without links. Links is going to magnify that, but it's only about, what was that, 700? Just under 700 uh, tank. So it's up to you on which you do. For the sake of this video, let's go ahead and do high grades just to see the maximum potential of this ship. But honestly, if you're trying to save money, you're going to do almost as well with the mid grades. So where are we? No, I don't want that. All right, now let's see if we've got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So five, three, nine, nine. That's pretty awesome. Um, just remember, if you do use implants of any kind, that you're going to have a much greater chance of not losing them in low sec or high sec if you're doing a war deck or something. Um, not for ganking. Don't, you're not going to lose them in ganking, but this isn't a ship for ganking. Um, but if you go to null sec you're going to have a much greater chance of losing any implants you have. If you're not bubbled in null sec or low sec or high sec, can't be bu bubbled in low or high. But if you're in low sec, let's say, and you get killed, there's a very low chance you'll lose your pod unless you get a lag spike or your game messes up or maybe you disconnect um, right as the fight's ending or right after you die or something like that. So it's still certainly possible for you to lose your pod. But if you see that you're dying and you're pretty sure you're going to die, you're going into structure and there's no more kills that can be had, you're not going to kill anything by focusing your fire and being attentive to, to your targets. If you see that's the case, then at that point, you want to select a celestial, a planet, a customs office, a gate, a station. And then you want to just start spamming warp. Just start clicking. Just well, I don't want to do that. Uh, just double clicking over and over on that uh, warp button. And just spam your warp. And as soon as you die, it'll take the warp and you'll warp out. And 95% of the chance or better, you're going to get away without losing your pod. Alright, so now let's look at the final thing for increasing the tank here, which would be links. Now, as one of my customers pointed out to me, this is not the best way to do links in a uh, T3. A command ship is technically going to provide better bonuses. However, for me, I've got an alt who does my links for me. He's pretty much unscannable. Not completely, but pretty much unscannable. And I can put him in a safe spot, turn on the ECCMs, and basically not worry about him at all while I'm fighting. And because I'm not having to focus on him, I'm not having to like have a command ship sitting at a station and be worried, is it getting bumped? Are people shooting it? Etc. Because I, I'm pretty sure he's safe, I can focus on what I'm doing with the combat ship. So now we've got this up, we've got Tech 2 links, we've got the mine link for shield, all good. So now what we're going to get, and I've got the command processor so I can run all three at once, not just one. What we're going to get out of this is we're going to get shield resist, um, shield boost amount, or not, uh, not, not amount, shield boost speed, so it's going to speed up, reduce the duration of the shield booster, and that's that one I think, and then it's going to reduce the amount of capacitor used by the shield booster. So the net effect of reducing the duration but also reducing the capacitor need is that the capacitor usage on the shield booster will stay the same. There'll be no difference in the amount of capacitor used by the shield booster. However, because we are boosting with a shorter duration, our total defense will go up. So no more cap to get much greater shield defense. However, we're also going to be getting shield resist bonus which is going to increase further our effective hit points and our defense. Also, because I've got the mine link, we're going to get a 15% bonus instead of the standard 10% for level 5 um, to shield hit points, which is further going to increase our effective hit points and slightly, very, very slightly our defense. So let's see what that does. 
Right click squad commander from ship. Bang. And now you can see just how awesome this thing is. 120,000 effective hit points. 8,735 effective defense. Now another thing that came up when I posted my video about fitting a golem just for pure tank, not necessarily for PvP, but for tank, was that people said, well, then you're going to over rep because 8,735 and you only have 11,931 shield. That's It's not accurate because the defense is a effective number. So that was that's taking into account your resists. Whereas this number right here is the hard capacity. It's not the effective capacity. We can see the effective capacity is 63,596. So it's actually, I don't know, uh, this is about 20% of your shields, one rep. Or that's not true. Let's, let's look. That's actually, it's not true. Let's look here. So I'm going to rep 4,879 of pure shield hit points per cycle. So that is going to be quite a lot. You're still not likely to over rep as so long as you manage it and you know what you're doing. Because it's 5,000 almost. So it's going to be about 40%, maybe 45% of your total shield hit points repped per cycle. I believe that's the case. Pretty sure. Because this is the pure amount without being affected by resists. This is the amount being affected by resists. And that's actually it's still not even correct because this is also divided by time. So it's divided by three seconds. And then that's then done in the equation with the resists to get 8,735. So anyways, Eve math, there we go. It's going to rep roughly 45% of your total hit points. So, if you run your shield booster at above 50%, you're going to over rep or have a strong chance of over repping. Now, when you're not running an ASB, over repping is less of a problem. For ARs and ASBs, over repping is, you know, public enemy number one, terrible, don't do it, it's going to remove your tanking ability. It's something that's very important. For a shield booster like this that doesn't have a limited amount of reps, it really doesn't matter nearly as much. However, in general, just good tactics is you want to try the bait tank. You want people to believe that you're struggling. So you don't want your shields to constantly jump from 50% to 100 and just keep jumping and jumping and them just feel like, holy crap, we're not even denting this guy. We have no chance in, in hell of killing him. So we're just going to warp away, and, you know, he's got one of us pointed, but it's better to lose one than everybody, right? It's the same theory behind structure tanking. Like, with I do the structure tanking Brutix, and a lot of people are doing with the uh, Hecate. The structure tank keeps people on the field because they believe that they're winning, and they're willing to take more losses if they believe they're winning than if they believe they have no chance. So if you've got 10 ships shooting at a Varger and you see him struggling to keep his shields above 30% and taking a little bit of armor damage here and there, you're going to say, dang, we've almost broken, guys. Come on, overload. We've almost broken. We've almost got him. Everybody go, go, stay. And it's going to keep them all in the field without being pointed so that you can just sit there and work your way through them one by one by one. And as a result, you'll kill three, four, five, six, many more than you would kill if you weren't bait tanking. So pretty much, unless it's like an emergency and you're overwhelmed and you just need to turn it on and leave it on, which I hope that never happens. I hope you can maybe practice on the test server or ideally, if you're going to use this in PvP, you need to start with the shield boosting guide on my website. And you need to go in there. And you need to start, try it out with Cyclone, try it out with the MOA, the Vagabond, the Drake, all the other ships that I teach you how to use in the shield boosting guide. Learn how to run a shield tank in PvP, a heavy shield tank, before you step up to a ship like this. This is not an easy ship to use. 
It's not something that you should just jump into just because you've got the ISK and you think that, hey, I've got the ISK. Let's go out there. I'm going to go teach those pirates a lesson. I'm going to show them. And if you don't really understand the fundamentals, you're not going to be able to pull it off. So go fly something cheap like a Cyclone, a MOA, Drake, Vagabond, um, and do something like that that's going to give you the experience for less cost that will teach you how to run these things properly. And then basically, that's pretty much it. Um, the tank's awesome. Let's, let's further explore that tank some. So let's say at the start of the fight, everything's going crazy. There's more people than you thought. Stuff warps in, whatever. You turn on your smart bomb. You ideally want to spread your nozzles, if possible, over two targets, but on the same target if that's what you got to do. And your tank is struggling, so you start having to overload. You overload your invul. Now you're at 9,489 tank. Overload your shield booster, and now you're at 12,000. But you've only got 4 minutes, 20 seconds of capacitor. You can also overload your capacitor booster to get a little bit more out of that, but realize now you're down 2 minutes, 10 seconds of burnout time. So you're not going to last long in this heightened state. Your ideal thing to do in a situation where you're struggling to hold on is to focus on getting your MJD off. So focus on using your smart bombs to kill any frigates that may be around you. You can overload them. No big deal. Focus on using the smart bomb. Focus on using the drones. Infiltrators are just as good for small targets up close as warriors. Much better for small targets up close. So if something's orbiting you at 500, say it's a Svepul or a Dramiel, the smart bomb's most likely going to force them back. But if it doesn't, for whatever reason, mediums are going to do just fine inside about 8K. Uh, beyond 10k, you certainly probably for something really fast like an interceptor or Dramiel, you want to switch to the Warrior Twos. Um, but that's your main priority: is you want to remove any scramblers that are on you. Once you've removed the scramblers, and I don't want to get into in-depth tactics. I'd have to do that in a tactics video where I can more properly show how to do it. But basically, remove the scrams. Don't worry about disruptors. Learn what the different icons look like. So, here. I don't know if it shows it in EVE. I mean in EFT. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. It'll work. I want to see if it shows the difference here in the icons. Barely. I, mean, I don't even know. Yeah, kind of. Learn the difference so you can tell which one's a scrambler and which one's a disruptor. And then that way you can see which ships, because not all frigates have scramblers. You'd be surprised at the ships that should have scramblers but have disruptors. Find out which ones are scrambling you, and then you can remove their scram from you. Hit your MJD cycle. Keep in mind that you have a spool up of 9.6 seconds and then a reactivation delay of 54 seconds. So is that at level 5? No. So you could actually improve that by getting it to level 5. I think that affects spool up. Not positive. Let's find out. Yes, it does. So you're going to have a 9 to 10 second spool up, which means that you're going, your ship's going to display a effect that lets everyone know if they're paying attention and probably half the time they're not going to be paying attention. It's going to show an effect that you're about to MJD. They're going to have a general direction of which direction you're going to MJD. Make sure you align first before you MJD. Align to a celestial, ideally a station or a gate. Station's better than gate if you're trying to get out. But align to a celestial, hit your MJD, and then you'll land 100k from the rest of the fleet. Now once that happens, you can then rebastion, turn that off, Turn that off. And then, you're not going to be using that. You might still need to tank up a little bit, I don't know. But then, since you have all this fall off, as everything on the field then starts to charge that 100k to where you are, 
they're all going to have almost no transversal, and therefore you are going to absolutely crush them on their way back into you. And that's just the basic tactics. But that's a good start to kind of get you an idea of how to fly the ship. If I get some good footage, or maybe even if I get terrible footage, probably I'll show you anyway, uh, so long as it's not too embarrassing. But I, I wouldn't mind showing you some footage where somebody dropped a dread on me just for laughs. But um, whatever happens in the ship, I'll try to get the footage, and I'll post that here on the site as well for everybody to look at. Maybe do a little walkthrough of what I could have done better or you know, what I did well. Maybe I'll crush a 20-man fleet and um, have a really fun time, which is what the game's all about. It, either way, I think it's going to be fun to fly this ship. It's very powerful. It takes a long time to train into, but it's a really, really nasty ship. And I can only imagine what a fleet of these things would do. Just imagine like 20 of these. 20 of these ships, you don't need logistics. I mean, logistics would be kind of ineffective with the Bastion modules anyways because you can't take reps. But 20 of these ships, no logistics. You've got 20,000 DPS. With 20 smart bombs going, you're just going to crush the smart bombs. You're going to crush any drones. You might even be with enough smart bombs at that point to start killing missiles that are incoming as well as uh, bombs, like from stealth bombers. So it could get pretty, pretty darn nasty at that point. And may maybe that's something for the future I can try to get my alliance to do. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then like, subscribe, and go to the website, eveproguides.com. If you're interested in this stuff, I highly suggest you check out the shield boosting guide that I did not very long ago. It's a great guide that'll show you everything you need to know to fly a ship like this, but starting with stuff that's a little bit cheaper.